But do you agree with Diane Abbott that society has become more sexualized, more pornified, to make up a word? Well, I definitely think the consumption rate is quicker because of online pornography and everything. They used to have to like get a mate to reach it off the top shelf if you wanted to see something, and that was an image. And now it's just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So definitely I would agree. Laurie, do you worry? I mean, as a parent, mm. your children, are, they're growing up in a world where they, it is much easier, as Catherine's saying, to come across sex and porn as a child. Absolutely. And I have to say that I feel as a parent that the government is expecting me to be able to police my children on this. And I actually asked my son, who's almost 13, how he would feel if I, you know, read his emails, looked at his Facebook, all that kind of stuff. And he said, Mum... Do you have any idea how many ways I know how to wipe my emails and wipe my search history? And, and you of course don't. I don't. Of course I don't. So actually, as parents, but our kids outclass that, us on that. That's a that's a practical reason for not doing. Not doing. But in principle, if you could, should no, you? I wouldn't. My mother didn't read my diary, and I would never read my children's emails. It's like if you're in a bad relationship and you start reading your husband's emails, okay. that's and a sign up, the relationship's you're in up trouble. For keeping an eye on this stuff, aren't you? I checked your mobile on the way in. <laughs> Checked, went through all those photos, emailed a few of them to myself, cropped it, put it up oh, on I Instagram. That. I'm in your emails. Which... I don't mind. If you live in my house, if I own you, I am in your you phone. You don't own anybody, though. Well, it, it depends. You're right. I think it depends on the child. It depends on the age. And the boundaries can be loosened a little bit with age and with trust. But there are little girls, little girls, creating their own pornography, taking photographs and putting them up on social networking sites that should not be there, letting their boyfriends or vice versa... Probably never. I think so. There's a Still huge amount of hysteria about sexting, though. And again, I asked my son, who's at a comprehensive school, you know, are you aware of this going on? And he said no. And now, I said, he's only 13, he's not 15, he's not 16. So I don't think it's going on in every classroom. But if snooping's not the answer, I understand that. Arming, what, it, what is? Well, one, one, the government to actually enforce something that says that when I buy, not just a computer, because it's PS3s, it's Xboxes, it's those things where you can get the internet now in kids' bedrooms, enforcing a kind of porn-free zone, so that I don't have to do anything. When so I buy you're it, not taking responsibility, you're I'm expecting saying, the government that, well, to take responsibility. I, all I'm saying is they have right? to accept that as parents, we can't do everything. But the government can. I, the government can force... The government can the bring government up can your force, kids. The government can force the industry <laughs> to actually take responsibility because they're the ones making all yeah. the money out of it. How long this. do you think it would take your smart kid to get a piece of software that will get around that? I don't know, but what I do think is also... What, what I think parents do have the job is actually arming their kids with self-confidence, with some degree of judgment. I don't think we should underestimate our children and assume that they're going to be the victims of this porn culture because actually the girls that I meet who are friends of my son are not... I think they're very confident young women. I don't think that they would be automatically doing stuff that their parents wouldn't like them to do. Kevin, you're a Canadian. Is, is there a difference? That, is the UK more sexualized, more porn into this pornification than other parts of the world, do you think? Um, in my experience, it's definitely different. I am Canadian, but I've lived in the UK for a long time. I'm a British mum. And I think the difference with the girls here that I've noticed is there's a drinking culture is really strong that comes into it too, and it's celebrated. And I've heard awful stories that girls just zipping down an alley with someone and there's something sexual that is, is not as intimate as a kiss. And the men have, the boys have come to expect this because of the access to porn. I think but it's celebrated the women, in they reality. They girls to behave. Yep, it's celebrated in reality TV. But that's mm. everywhere, you know, North America and here. Yes. I think the drinking culture here is something I've never seen anywhere else before with the young girls. I mean, not every one of them, of course not. It's I mean, a generalization. But. Channel 4 News, uh, which is not exactly in the reactionary wing of British television, a couple of weeks ago had quite an expose of the degree of the sexualization of texts and of emails and so on. It was pretty concerning. And they also had evidence that it was changing, particularly male attitudes to females, in a, in a bad way, in a way that any feminist would be appalled. I agree. And I think one of the arguments, a lot of this has been framed around almost making the, the, the victims of this, the girls whose images are being, say, for example, circulated, mm. making them feel responsible. What we should be saying is to, to the, our, our sons, this is not acceptable. Circulating certain images is illegal and you ha must respect women. 
absolutely becomes it becomes part of education, both in school and at home. And as a parent, my job is to have those conversations. Now, my son will roll his eyes at me, you know, and, oh, God, here she goes again. But, I'll, but I will do that. The question is how many are pa all parents doing that? Do you have anything to add to this conversation? I think, I think it must be an, a nightmare to try and make these decisions because yes. um, it, <clears throat> I, I entirely agree that, you know, your child is your responsibility and... You know, ultimately, if things are going badly, you want to know what's going wrong. You need to save that child from that decision. But I also agree that you know, I would have been horrified if my parents had been reading my private uh, materials. But my private materials, you know, when I was a kid, were not putting me in danger. And the private materials of your daughter could be putting her in, do in danger. And they're no longer uh, private. The, uh, it's more dangerous. I raised two girls in the 70s, but... I don't know. I mean, there's never been a time where it's been safe out there for children who do not get the right parental advice, etc. But government ministers should not be lecturing to parents, number one. I'm with Lowry and Michael on this issue about accessing private information. If I'd have done that to my daughters, let alone their, uh, their mother, there'd have been a breakdown of trust. And, you know, that there's, there's no government way to, yeah, I mean, to, to deal with this. Well, Catherine, between what, what, wouldn't what we don't know is the long-term impact of this, because mm. this is the first young generation that's been subjected to almost anything they want to see on the net. We have no idea where this is going to lead. Yeah, and, and it may not be good. Bless them, because they can also put anything on the net. Yeah. You speak about privacy. If my daughter wants to keep a handwritten diary under her bed that isn't going out into the interweb, mm. that's one thing. It's not private. It's, it's on the internet, and it's there forever. And thank goodness the little home movies that I made with my sisters, the sketches my diary, were not published. <laughs> I thank the No, we wanted everything. to see them.